Hey, this is Mr. Spencer. I'm going to do a little video showing you how to blend quotes into your essay and create that final works cited page at the end. All right, now I've got a little example essay I've been working on. I just had like a skeleton outline. I had a possible thesis statement there. My three main ideas, I'm just still working them out. But as I start my body paragraphs, I want to get a chance to start blending quotes into my essay. I can't just drop in a quote. I can't just drop the quote in, copy and paste, and then think I'm done. This is an essay. So we're trying to smoothly and gracefully blend your quotes into your essay. Got it? All right, Chief, let's take a look at this. Now, we have the review this week for Kahoot. Play the game if you haven't. There was a Kahoot question on some essay and I-step review. We do have I-step coming up, so make sure you got it right there. Okay, here's the assignment sheet for our assignment. We've got the essay says, think critically as you read the following prompt. Was Chris far from crazy or was the sanest thing he could have done? There's his sister, Kareem. She lived, Chris died. So if you go to the bottom of the assignment sheet, there are some examples there where there's quotes with page numbers from the handout I gave you of Into the Wild by John Krakauer. And then we've got quotes from Corrine McCandless's book, The Wild Truth. There are copies of that on its learning. If you go to Texts and Stories, you can pull it up there. Search it yourself if you'd like to. Download it or use this magnifying glass function and you can search for certain words if you think they're in the book. Find your own quote there. What do you see? So I want to find a quote and use it in my essay. What am I writing about here? Okay, I had a little hook, attention getter. I mentioned John Krakauer's book here, and I mentioned Kareen's book in my essay. So I made a claim that his ego was his downfall, and that Kareen McCandless's argument that her brother was far from crazy when walking into the wild alone is actually invalid, considering the arrogance he displayed going to Alaska with so few supplies. So I had a main idea that maybe I'd talk about Chris McCandless's attitude towards his family. Another main idea later I'll talk about his attitude or arrogance with nature and his arrogance and attitude towards himself. So I still need to write those paragraphs. Let's see, family, nature, or with himself. Can I find a quote that helps me with this? I can use my handout of the book or Mr. Spencer's already found some here. If you want to do your own research, please try to avoid, if you can, .com websites. When you show those in your work site, it, it says that you may be found websites that were not reliable. .com is for commercial. Okay, They're selling advertisement space. They're considered less trust, trustworthy and credible. .org and .edu websites are always more reliable. Just a little note for you. So I've got some quotes from Chris. He's got no preparation here, so I definitely could think this could be a good quote. Okay, I don't need the whole thing. It's pretty long as it is. So I'm just going to use this one here. Yeah, those are pretty good. Okay, not prepared. His arrogance with nature. So I've got my main idea. Let's actually turn this into a topic sentence. So if this was my first main idea after the intro, first body paragraph, then I could say like, all right, use a transition. Secondly, Chris's arrogance with nature was witnessed by the various people who gave him a ride and helped him get to Alaska. Uh, who is this guy? The last man that saw Chris alive was, and since I don't know him personally, I should say, it's not like my buddy Chris, like I'm writing about this famous person, so I'll use his last name. Okay. I wouldn't just use his last name because I don't want to confuse it with Kareem McCandless. So I'm going to use both names so I know which McCandless I'm talking about. Walt, Billy, Kareem, Chris. Jim Galleon was the man driving that pickup truck. He was the electrician mentioned in Chapter 1. After giving Chris a ride and... Um, offering him food and insulated snow boots. Author John Krakauer noted how significant it was that, and then where's my quote? I took it from here, but look, it's not the same font. 
that's Calibri size 11. So when I take my quote, I've already got the page number there. I'm going to right click paste without formatting because I want that Times New Roman font. Stay with the same font. I put the quotation mark because I'm quoting John Krakauer. And then I've got the page number there. If I don't put the page number there, I could also just put it right here. And then maybe a comma or a colon. Okay. But I've got the page number there. I do need a comma. Make sure you've got that. That's important. Okay. See it? Can I just finish the paragraph? No. Let's check. What does the outline say? Mr. Spencer's outline says topic sentence, quotation from the book, page number in parentheses, and then analysis. I need three to five sentences explaining the importance of the quote related back to my thesis. My thesis was that Chris was actually very arrogant, going with no supplies. His ego was his downfall. So how can I relate this? I could say, Chris must have assumed that the more, what, the more tools and resources he relied on, the less, I'm going to put this in quotes, truthful, because I'm kind of like, is it truthful? I want the reader to think about that word choice. The less truthful his experience would be. Look, I didn't say I think Chris assumed, or I think Chris did this, or I believe Chris did this. I delete those. That makes my essay less persuasive if I use more personal phrases like this. So delete phrases like I think or I believe. Delete them. You don't need them. Okay, so I still need about three to five sentences explaining the importance of the quote. Without an axe, basic tasks such as, yeah, chopping firewood to stay warm or cook meat would be next to impossible. And although Chris's sister sympathizes with his need to escape society, right? Let me double click that there so I can see everything. Okay. Kareen does not address the egotistical arrogance that Chris also carried with him into the wilderness. Yeah, that's good. One more sentence, like a concluding sentence for this paragraph. The quote was about no axe, no bug dope, no snowshoes, no compass. Literally, he had no compass. Literally. Okay, we have them on our phones now. It's pretty easy. But even back then, having like an actual tactile compass, what about figuratively? Did Chris have a moral compass? Besides not even having a compass to keep direction, Chris also appeared to lack a moral compass, abandoning his family with no word or contact. Moral compass, like his sense of right and wrong, I'm going to add this, the adverb, cruelly. He's cruel to do that. So I blended the quote in. You see it? Pretty good, right? I could have arrogance with himself, maybe find another quote from the assignment sheet there. Maybe arrogance with himself. Okay, there's the quote. This is what he writes near the end of his experience, hoping somebody would find him. Look, he needs other people. So I could say complicated his circumstances, near death and too weak to hike out or cross the Teklanika River. That was the name of the river, right? Teklanika River. Teklanika. E K, got it. Check my spelling. 
Chris wrote, I could use a comma or a colon. And I got the quote. I already copied it there, so I'm actually going to right-click, paste without formatting. Okay, I'm going to fix the formatting here because I don't need those extra spaces. And what, what page number? Oh, that was in the reading we had on page 16. I'm actually just going to write... I've got the page number there, but I also need who is the author. This isn't Kareem McCandless's book. This was John Krakauer's book. So I can just put the author's name there and the page number there. I already put the page number in the sentence, so I'm just going to leave the author's name there. That means I know I can go to the work cited at the end, and that's the book I got it from. Chris wanted to live without relying on others, but ironically, the last thing he expected, uh, thing's not a good word, be more precise. The last the last circumstance that Chris expected to find himself was to be desperately pleading for help from others. He was physically too weak, but his tragic end, I'm going to make an argument here. It's a strong, bold argument, but I'm writing an argumentative essay. It's arguable. You could disagree with me, but I'm going to say also demonstrated his mental weaknesses by not preparing adequately for such a dangerous journey. Mentally weak. It's a strong argument, but I think I've supported it with my logic. I built, I gave some commentary. Remember, the outline says you should have like three to five sentences. Don't just drop the quote in, in the sentence. Never end a body paragraph with a quote. Okay, always finish with your commentary last. Okay. If he was more, if he was mentally stronger, his family could have shared the wisdom and warmth he could have brought back from Alaska. That's pretty nice. So then the final paragraph would be like in conclusion, or I could say like, ultimately or finally <clears throat> that would be my last paragraph i still need to write it how many paragraphs do i have i got one i got barely a first body paragraph i got most of my second body paragraph and i got most of my third so i'm pretty much finished with those just need to finish this one here and my conclusion proofread it revise it and i go through the writing process steps there okay so right now i'm still in step three haven't taken time to revise. I got to have a work cited at the end. So that's your documentation where you actually show where you got your material from and it's in modern language association format. Okay, I already put at the bottom of the quotes here after Kareem McCandless's book, how to do it. There's a link here to the Purdue OWL website, show you how to cite any book. You can even search for the books or websites, type them in and they can help you find them. Make sure it's the right edition. And it also gives you other examples with some of their advertisements popping up of how to cite other things that you look for. Okay, if you want to cite Chris's journal, just he's the author. McCandless, Chris, you would write something like that. Comma. Just say personal journal. Okay. It, it was not published anywhere. I just found it online from a website. If I did want to do that, I could cite that website. Okay, so if I found it from a website like this one that's hosting it, I've got Pinterest. Okay, here's, yeah, nprnews.org. So I could cite this right here. Yeah, they've got it right there. And it's not .com, so it's a website I can trust. I like it. So I could put that in mine. And if I go to the Purdue Owl website, they actually have ways that it'll help me find Citation Generator. Copy and paste it in there, nprnews.com, and see if it'll help me cite that. Okay. 
got it. It helps me find this for the journal. It doesn't have too much information, so I'm still going to have to add the publisher or sponsor. That's what I still need to add. And when I go to that website, I'm thinking the publisher or sponsor is NPR News. If I go to the very bottom where they put all the copyright information, oh, it's actually yeah, Minnesota Public Radio. They're the ones that, so that's what NPR stood for. All right, article title. Let's see, author. Yeah, it looks good to me. Complete citation. And I could use this in my work cited. Yep, look, I've already got it. Times New Roman looks good. So I could do that, or I could actually show more detail because that's the website I got that image from. Okay, when you're doing work cited here, I could quote from the journal. And if I actually go to my work cited here, if your citation is longer than two lines, you need to highlight the whole thing and put it up here to do the hanging indent. Okay, I drag this over a half inch, but then I go to that little rectangle and that first line indent I bring back over. So that's there and that's there. It's like the reverse inverse of what a paragraph would be. You also should alphabetize these when you have more than one source. So K comes before M, the first letter of the citation, but B comes before K. So I would want to put that there. I'm only putting this here if I'm going to quote from, let me fix that again, first line indent. Yep. Bam. I'm only doing this if I'm actually taking an idea from Chris's journal and putting it in my essay. So I could say like on day 43 when Chris said moose, so that could be where I put it. And that could be like, you know, on day 43 of his trip, Chris Canvas showed his emotional excitement writing colon or comma moose and that's what he wrote there moose this emotional outburst unfortunately this is my conclusion like my biggest boldest thoughts as i finish the essay were unbalanced were not balanced with strong mental strength. Now, I already said strong, so yeah, mental preparation and physical prowess. His tragic death was accidental, but others can learn from his mistakes, including his family. So I'm kind of wrapping it up there. And then my last paragraph, I need something sort of very thoughtful and reflective. But sometimes when you look to the past, your last sentence of your conclusion can kind of look towards the future. So maybe I do something like that. Looking forward, right? Looking towards the future. Anyone considering taking a risk in life and not conforming to society's traditions and expectations should heed these warnings from Chris McCandless. The more mental planning that goes into your risk taking, the better all everyone will be not just you but your family and all the people that you influence okay so you should have your work cited on a separate page okay you write that at the top it's more than one source so it should be plural with an s okay i need to put her name there because she's the one that published this article for npr news okay so her name is bickel so i've got it here and i'll just put it right there there's no page number because it's from a website i've got it there that's her name. Yeah, Ray Ellen Bickell. Uh, there I was. Got it. So I'm just about done. Still need to work on this other paragraph up here. Didn't finish it. I need at least four to five sentences per paragraph. Got my title here. Looks pretty good. Centered at the top. And I've made sure that everything is double spaced. Now I just need to finish up. And then 
do a little bit of revision and proofreading to make sure all my ideas make sense. Okay, make sure I look at the rubric there. This is Mr. Spencer signing off.